Hey everyone, Cynix here, and it's time for another episode of Paint Over Pals. So I'll be doing some paint overs of artwork submitted by my patrons, but while you watch, I strongly recommend you play along at home, and by that I just mean to take a moment every time you see a new art submission and think of what critiques you would give, because once again, giving critiques is a valuable part of becoming a better artist. All right, let's jump into things. So first up, I have this painting by Zafira, who I think they said it was supposed to be Wonder Woman. But regardless, the first thing that really jumps out at me is just those lips. It has this weird Joker-esque lip extension that looks like it was carved up into the cheek. And I really don't like that. It makes me a bit uncomfortable. So I'm just gonna get rid of those right off the start. And uh, I'm not sure if they were on purpose or a stylistic thing, but they were just kind of creeping me out. Uh, after that, I'm just gonna add a little bit of extra ambient occlusion here in like the little darkest crannies and nooks that are hidden away, maybe behind the hair or just anywhere where it feels like no light would get to. So a little bit more darkness in parts and then just more form added to the shoulders and the arms because they were pretty formless before and we always got to show a little bit of muscle tone, a little bit of form on the shoulders. And of course the shoulder that was farther away from us I changed completely because it was tangenting with the boob area. So it was kind of blending right in, the line was going right around it, and it just didn't look good. So a little bit of a tangent correction and I think it looks a lot better. I think my main job though is just going to be to go around on the face and simplify things. You got a bit overcomplicated with all of the values and forms you were trying to show, when really you just needed to be very mindful of a single directional light and really simplify all of the forms out and flatten them a little bit more. And maybe it's not so much the forms you're flattening out, but just making sure you understand that if the planes don't shift too much, you're not gonna get a whole lot of value and contrast shifting going on. So here you can see, I just got rid of both of the darkness on both sides of the nose because why would we have shadow on two sides of a nose? That would be very weird. There needs to be a light source coming from somewhere. In fact, if we want something to look extra pretty, we'll light it very evenly. So we'll have light on both sides instead of shadow on both sides. So I just simplified a whole bunch and I added back in the ear looking like a proper ear because before it just looked like a peanut was stuck in her hair or maybe a piece of gum or something. So we wanted to make sure it looks like an ear and I think that's about it. So I tried to leave as many proportional and color choices intact and just fixed what I could. Hopefully you think it reads a lot better now. Next up, we have some drawings by Brian, who is becoming a regular here on Paint Over Pals. I think he's been in the last three episodes. Hopefully we can watch him keep improving as an artist. So you can see here, I like that he made the mouth a little bit more three-dimensional by showcasing the sides of the mouth more so than the front of the mouth. That's certainly a good thing. But if we look at some of the proportions, they feel a bit off. So for instance, the eyes and the nose should form more of an equilateral triangle, but instead it's this very shallow triangle, which comes from both the nose being a bit high and the eyes being a bit wide. Either of those things you can probably get away with, but when you have everything combined, it just looks a bit off. So we wanna make sure also that the mouth is a little above the halfway point between the nose and the chin. So aside from that, um, I really just hope Brian starts working on his draftsmanship a little more. So we wanna get nice simple lines and not have a lot of crossing lines going on. Anytime two lines cross each other, it really just flattens out whatever form you're trying to show. So you always need to watch out for that and just probably just work on simple strokes for everything. Keep your lines nice and smooth, focus on big shapes, you know, all the standard stuff. But I think you'll improve the more you draw. So just keep drawing as much as you can because that's the most important part. I do like your study on the bottom right. It was looking pretty good. It just needed an extra punch of darkness, especially around the eyes. Just really emphasize those T lines, emphasize the form, be a little bit more confident with them. You can see here, just adding a little bit more cleanliness a little bit more control over the lines will definitely help things reach the next level. Also, that face along the top needs to be a lot less oblong in the horizontal sense and much more oblong in the vertical sense because it was looking a little squished. All right, what else do we got? Here is a creature painting by Dean, and I think that looks pretty good to be honest. It's a good first impression I have. 
Um, I'm just gonna quickly do a couple minor things such as blending out the tail a bit. We don't wanna draw attention to something that's going off into the distance. So I'll just push that into the background a little bit. And the other thing that really jumped out at me was the shadow on the ground. It looks like, from what I can tell, that you just took the silhouette of the character and squished it down and placed it at the bottom, which, I don't know, I've seen a lot of people do it. I think it's a terrible way to do shadows. It just always messes with the form. It doesn't make any sense when you compare it to the rest of the form. So I would prefer even just simple circles over something like that because it really messes with the brain's understanding of what should be going on. So I'm just gonna simplify the shadow under him and now I'll just go around and fix a bunch of different little minor surface things. So his little frill along the back, you had the right idea by giving it a little bit of grunge texture, ripping it up a bit. We just needed to make sure those chunks were more confident, not just thin little lines. And with the whole character itself, I feel like the highlights needed to be a little less white and a little more saturated. So all those areas around the mouth and anywhere where you were taking it to a lighter, brighter white color, we need to bring it into a stronger, saturated, more yellowy color. And that's gonna make it look a lot better. Aside from that, I'm just popping in a lot more, once again, darkness in any of the crevices, maybe a little bit more ambient occlusion, you could say. Um, but just popping in that extra hint of darkness, especially around the face and the eye, is gonna make things pop much more in the focal areas. And you really want people to focus on the face. So I'm gonna do anything I can to bring attention to the face, and that's usually just gonna be a lot of contrast. For the flowers around the wrist, they were looking a little too evenly lit and just having too much bright saturation going on. So I just had to bump those back a bit. I'm sorry I ruined all the rendering though. I just kind of made them simple and ugly, but if you get the right idea, hopefully you can go back and fix them in a much better way. So, you know, that's the sad part about paint overs. You can't always be as pretty as the original when you're doing a paint over. Uh, but hopefully the idea comes across and you can understand what would make it better in the future. I also tried to lessen the amount of red light being bounced off the rose. It's good that you were thinking about it, but it was a little bit too extreme for my tastes. So here you can see the before and after, and I hope you appreciate the more saturated highlights because that was the main thing I really wanted to focus on. And I think it brings a lot more life into the creature. All right, here we have another painting by Joey, who was in the last episode. And this time he's got a little kid playing in the rain with an umbrella. I don't know, I like the values and colors right off the bat. I feel like it has a very cohesive feel to it. Nothing feels very out of place, which is definitely nice. It has a nice soft focus going on. One thing I didn't understand was those little divots. I don't know what they were, but next to his feet, there were these little dark spots, which felt really out of place. Although the next thing that jumped out at me was just the overall pose of the character and proportions. It's not the best, but I'm gonna do my best to just work with the pose you created. So in order to complement it a little better, I'm gonna go through all of your fabric and your folds and just try to implement them a little bit better. So for folds in the pants and the clothes, you always wanna make sure they come from whatever the tension point is and not just a random point on the side of his torso, but come from the shoulder and come from those tension points and make sure you have a nice chunky amount of creases. So lots of triangular shapes will create a much more realistic feel to all your fabrics. Once I've done that, I made the arm come in at a much different angle. It was too stiff, it felt weird. So I brought his hand up a bunch, and at least that way I feel a little bit better about his hand holding the umbrella. I made his neck a little bit bigger and made a bunch of other subtle little changes as well. Once again, really trying to get away from anywhere where we got really thin highlights. I don't like little tiny thin lights of color on everything, so more big shapes, more big ideas. And aside from that, I lightened in the whole top thing. I don't know if it was supposed to be like a brightly illuminated umbrella, but I think it works pretty well. There seemed to be a lot of light radiating from the umbrella, but it wasn't really shown on the character itself, especially the head. So I just brightened up the whole head area and you can see the finished results here. So hopefully you like those changes and they don't deviate too far away from whatever the original goal was. And finally, the last image I have for you guys is by Valentine, who has this painting here. Um, I think in the last episode, I mentioned that his stuff was way too bright. He had something on a white background and everything went to white. 
So I told him to use a darker background and he went pretty extreme with it. Everything's really dark now. Um, so I'm glad he was listening. But the main thing that we need to focus on for this paint over is getting rid of all of that contrast. So all I'm gonna do is take a light airbrush and just go over everything. I'm just airbrushing over everything. And if you airbrush over lightly enough, you'll still have some of his value changes, but everything's being minimalized a lot more. And once everything's been minimalized and normalized, uh, then you can go back in and add little hints of value changes that are stronger in certain parts. So you can see I'm just going through trying to fill out the anatomy. I don't want to change his drawing too much. I'm trying to work with all of the lines and the, the limitations he gave me. So the anatomy is not going to be perfect, but I'm going to do my best to work inside those proportions and make the anatomy seem believable by using rendering. Uh, the face is going to be the biggest challenge. I had to just kind of redo the face. It was, it was a little bit all over the place. So a quick, just loose painting. You can see how loosely you need to paint things and then you can just slowly tighten things up as you go which is a great way to paint it's a great way to think about things always approach things as blocky and as loose as you can and then just slowly add more to each area so I'm working on the eyes right here her head is definitely tiny for the body but you know whatever at least it looks vaguely realistic now I don't know it's it's not it's not that realistic uh, but I think it looks okay for a paint over it that obeys all the same laws that were established. Um, but hopefully it showcases just how much that rendering the skin in the right way can do for a piece. So you can see here I minimalized every contrast change completely and made everything a lot more smoother and a lot more simple. And when you minimalize all your contrast changes and make them very subtle, everything will look better, especially when you're painting skin. Skin is very matte. It doesn't have a lot of shine and contrast changes going on. So there's the before and after for that. And hopefully this was a fun episode and you learned a little bit more about painting stuff. Maybe you learned about simplifying areas and minimalizing your contrast changes like in the first and last painting. And maybe for that creature one, you learned the importance of using saturation for your highlights in order to make things look more lifelike. You never want things to look like they're going toward white or toward black because that'll just make things look dead. All right, I think that's gonna do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I would like to give a big thank you to all of my wonderful patrons who support these videos, and especially all of my patrons who submitted artwork this month. So thank you everyone for watching, and I will see you again shortly.